Good. Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to be doing a little talk about um, some of our new software developments, uh, starting off with a little piece about uh, impact, which has some big improvements. Um, probably not spending very long on that. And then moving on to um, Risk OSM and what we've been doing uh, since the last Wakefield show and uh, some of the ideas for the future. Um, can I just check what time do I have till? Oh, oh you've got nothing. Ah. <laughs> oh, I should have. Anyone know what, who's, who's on next and when in the, in the show theatre? <laughs> that one was quarter past two, I think. Quarter past two. Right, well, I, I, will, I will try and stop talking um, a little bit before two o'clock so that people can ask questions um, and so that I can clear out before the next person comes in. I'll keep an eye on it. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, well, uh, first of all, we'll start off with impact, which is... Um, the relational uh, database, easy to use package, which was originally written by John Skingley. And um, we took over um, maintaining it uh, round about the time the Ionix came out. And uh, that was on behalf of CJE. And then, I can't remember how long ago, I, I, I bought him out. And uh, um, we've been um, developing uh, impact under Synonomino software ever since. Now, uh, it's been a bit of a poor relation to uh, Risk OSM the last few years uh, because uh, there's just been so much um, wonderful stuff to do with the map software. Uh, but I've taken the time um, this year to do a new release of Impact, um, which now has much better import facilities um, for importing data from other sources. So, um, Impact uh, is, is main, mainly... Uh, centered around a record card, simple uh, database record card, where you have uh, fields. And There's a, an editor where you can drag fields in and change the sizes of the boxes on the card. Uh, you can choose different types of fields from numbers or text. Multi-line text is available as well. Um, date fields. This, this um, example, I would, I'd say actually this is not necessarily a desperately uh, beautifully laid out card. Uh, this was not one I created myself. Um, but um, it's got a good range of different field types on here. Now, uh, the previous version of um, Impact, if you wanted to import data, you had to um, <coughs> produce a selection of fields called a field map with the um, selection in precisely the same order as the text file that you're going to import, which meant you really had to kind of know what your text file looked like before you even put it anywhere near impact. Now, I've taken advantage of some new uh, code uh, which was written for Risk OSM originally, um, and so we now have a much better facility. So here's a CSV file. It could be a tab-separated value file um, as well. We drop it um, onto this area. Up pops um, a table view of the uh, data in the CSV file, uh, so we can see what there is. Um, Impact will try to identify whether there is uh, a row of headings, but it's sometimes a bit hard to do that if um, everything is textual. Um, so I can switch here to say that there's a row of headings. And then uh, from the menus, I can choose uh, which fields I want to import the data into. Um, now, the example I've got here is a really bad example because uh, the data is nothing related to the, um, the database I'm trying to import it into. But anyway, never mind. We will um, um, we'll try choosing uh, the prenum field. As you can see, it's saying some of the data won't fit in this field. Uh, so up to five characters will be truncated. And I can highlight those rows in the table, and I think, oh yeah, what do I want to do about them? Um, so there's a few options there. Um, I could go and alter the record card to allow for a longer field. Um, or if I wanted to make these uh, entries a bit more concise, I can actually out-click in the cell um, and uh, maybe um, 
maybe um, cut down a bit on the um, on the data. You'll notice there, by the way, I I, I, I should have showed you um, that um, if you've got several selected at once, it offers whether you want to actually do the same edit in all of the selected records you've got. So uh, you can make a few updates simultaneously if you if you want to. So um, I'll save in the selected records and we'll have them all like that. So I can um, I can I can check again. Um, oh, we've still got one which is slightly too long. Yeah, I didn't do anything about that. I'm going to remove that comma. So so now the data will fit into our database. Um, we'll we'll put the postcode into the postal code field. Um, and we'll put the street name into the address field. And I don't have to use all of these fields. I can throw away um, some of the data. If I'm not actually wanting to import all the data from my external source, I don't have to map every field. And you can choose whether to match uh, these records for overlay. So uh, if I wanted to update existing data in the database, I say, well, uh, I want you to look for something which has the uh, full name field the same and where the postal code is the same. Um, and if we find a matching record, it will update it with the new values. Otherwise, it will create a new record. And I can also choose, if I wish, just to handle a selection of the data. Um, so I've got to just click and just drag and all that kind of standard thing to make a selection of records. Anyway, there's also a test button, so you can see um, again, it's saying that one of the fields was uh, truncated by one character. Um, and there will be 34 new records imported. So it doesn't match anything existing in the database by the postal code. So if I'm happy with that, um, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a view button which allows you to see exactly which ones would be imported and which ones wouldn't. Of course, it's importing all of them, so it's highlighting all of them there. But if it had got some matching records, I'd be able to click and uh, see which ones would match and overlay. Um, any records which uh, had errors and were discarded, I'd be able to highlight those and make any corrections. Finally, when I'm happy with it, I can then click on import and it will bring in the records. Oh, that's interesting. <coughs> now, you see, the test is very slightly different from the real import because during the course of importing, it realizes that some of the records are the same by a postal code, and so they have overlaid each other. That might not be what you expect, but that's the consequence of how it does the job. Um, so we can view those and see uh, which, which ones have actually um, been affected in that way. And we're now, in fact, viewing it in the database itself. So if I do the um, control click on a row, it will bring it up in the card, and we can then make any changes. So compared with uh, the previous way of doing import, uh, this is a vast improvement um, because you can do all the uh, matching up of fields yourself um, with full knowledge of what it thinks is in your file you're trying to import. Now, um, you also have the ability to create a whole new database from scratch using this uh, facility. Uh, previously, the only way to create a database in Impact uh, was uh, to open a new one like this and you drag in uh, different sorts of fields and you'd uh, resize them according to how big you wanted them to appear and you'd give the fields names. Um, so if you had been wanting to import from the CSV file to create a new database, there was quite a lot of work you had to do up front before you could get anywhere near importing it. So we've uh, made some big changes here. I'm going to just drop um, this CSV file. This is a file which I got from an open government data website. Um, it has all of the railway stations in the UK um, in it. Um, and we get a similar table view like this. We can you know, scroll up and down and see what sort of stuff there is, which fields we might want to keep. So um, in order to make this work, um, I'm going to uh, choose a field name here, uh, I'm going to call that one code, and it's a text field. 
um, they call that station name. It is actually... A yeah, as, as you may have seen, it has, in, in this, on this occasion, it has worked out that the first row of the CSV file was field headings. The reason it was able to do this is because these easting and northing coordinates are entirely numbers. And so the fact that the first row had some letters there is a dead giveaway. So it has already suggested some field names for us. We can change those as we wish. So I'm going to import the station name as text. I don't care about the grid type. We'll import the easting and the northing as numbers. Um, and we'll import this creation date time as a date. Now, with dates, um, you have to tell it what format the date is in because impact can display dates in a number of different formats. It offers a few um, examples in this menu. So, suppose it was in that format. Um, they're not in that format. I've chosen that format. It's warning us some of the values in this column can't be interpreted using the chosen date format, and I can highlight them. Well, I know it's all of them, so I'm not going to bother highlighting them. But you'll see here, it's now got the date format codes up here, which are standard in a lot of Riscos um, applications, and you can get guidance on that in the manual. I'm going to be adding some more date formats in this menu uh, to cover some of the other uh, possibilities. And I'm just going to rearrange this now into the correct order for the data. So day, month, year, um, and then there's a letter T, and then we've got uh, oh, this is where I can't remember what they're called. Actually, I'm just going to see whether it will load just the um, the dates without the times um, by doing that. It's happy with that. It's not given us any warnings about um, about not matching. And then the revision date uh, revision is a number. Um, oh yes, grid type. Um, Sometimes you'll get fields where there's a limited range of values. Um, the, you know, it's a code of some kind that uh, you have a limited range of values. You might have a field for a person's title where there's Mr. and Mrs. and Miss and all that kind of thing. Um, and you might want to choose them from a menu. So Impact supports that type of field. And if Impact detects that there's a relatively small number of values in the data you're proposing to import, then it will offer... Um, option fields, flag fields, menu and browser fields, which are various different sorts of uh, things. Option fields are radio buttons, flags are tick boxes, uh, menus, it's fairly obvious what that is. So I'm going to, yes. I'm going to choose a menu type, um, and then we're going to import. And I could just import a selection, but well, let's do that. I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to um, unselect um, just a few of them just to show you it does it, um, and we then import. Um, it's telling us there are four columns where the field names are assigned, but we haven't uh, uh, given it a field type, and they're going to be ignored. Well, that's fine. I didn't want them. Uh, but if you had deliberately typed in the field name uh, and have forgotten to choose, choose a type, it would be a bit of a nuisance. So I'm going to continue loading. It's, it'll do a few bit of hourglassing, um, and uh, then it will load it all in. And here we are. Um, we've now, in fact, created a database. It has laid out a card automatically for you with, the, uh, with labels down here for the field names. You may well want to change those. They're not the field names. They're just labels to tell you what to put, be put in each box. Grid type. Turns out there was, in fact, only one value in grid type anyway. So, um, but if there'd been more, we could have shown that. Another interesting one is the easting and northing, where if we actually edit the card, um, sorry, that's not how you edit the card. If you edit the card, um, you'll see that, uh, oh, that's interesting. What it was meant to do was have six digits minimum because they were all six digits long. I suspect one of them hasn't got anything in there or something like that, but um, it can try and work out what the best format is if you've got uh, numbers with decimal places, it'll, it'll say how, how they're going to be formatted. And we can see a table here again, um, which looks very similar because it's done by the same business software, but this is now what's actually in our database. Um, and you'll see that the um, creation date is looking a bit different because the code I put in, in fact, is a code where the month is spelled out in words. Um, 
So it's being able to interpret it properly, even though the month was in numbers, uh, and now it's displaying it in the card. It's uh, shown in words. We could change the format quite easily if we wanted to put it in a different order. Edit the card. Um, let's have it. Um, let's have it that for, um, yeah, that way. Um, And, and we'll now have the data formatted the other way around. So uh, both of these uh, developments have uh, made it a lot uh, more straightforward to import data. Um, now, of course, RISC OSM uh, can also import CSV data. And so I'm just going to do a quick demo of how uh, we can, um, in fact, um, export a text file. So I'm exporting from uh, Impact now, um, and we're going to export the whole table um, <coughs> and put it in this SM, uh, which will then do it. Now you can see where the code came from, can't you? Um, this is identifying uh, automatically that it's an Easting in the Northing Ordnance Survey Grid reference, and um, so the developments in risk OSM have actually benefited impact because we've been able to reuse some of this uh, code. So it's now importing all of these uh, things as pins which will be placed on the map. I'm not going to draw a map of the whole area, uh, but we'll just, uh, we'll just pick one of them and uh, draw a map. Uh, here we are, it's part of Wales. There's a pin uh, placed on in the right location. If we zoom out a little bit further, uh, we'll see a few other neighbouring stations on the different uh, lines on the Caribbean coast uh, and down towards our blister. So uh, that does a quick round trip and immediately gets us from impact into risk OSM. Um, and I've only got, apologies for this, I've only got uh, less than half the time left now. Oh. Right, well it's probably about time that impact have an, had another outing. So uh, quick, quick whiz through uh, new features in risk OSM. Um, we have a new resizing tool. So we used to be a, you used to be able to go to choices and choose whether you wanted A4 or A3 paper size or indeed any arbitrary size you wanted. There's now a nice tool here which you just click and you can choose the paper sizes. You can put in the draw file size in millimeters or the window size in pixels or in fact you can just uh, drag the window down there and when you're happy um, it'll redraw the map. And, and there we are. So that's very handy, much quicker. Um, there is, um, since the last show uh, here, we, at the, at the um, release in London, we added a feature to allow you to trace uh, routes on the map so you can draw, uh, draw lines and instead of it, um, instead of you needing to click at every corner, it will actually follow along the road um, like that, and you can click however many times you want. Um, and uh, here we have a track drawn on the map which is now following, uh, following the road, so it will follow features. And there are different um, tools, you can be um, in a car, on a bike, walking, boat or train, and it will then hug different appropriate types of tracks on the map depending on what you're actually wanting to trace because you don't really be wanting to go off along a railway line if you don't have the right equipment, um, <coughs> such as a train. Uh, anyway, um, we then um, have an, an, another nice new feature when you are tracing routes um, is this lock button. Uh, the lock button prevents you from dragging the map about, because if you're editing a, 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 a route and you wanted to, to drag a point on it, it was a little bit too easy to drag the background of the map by mistake and then they're not having to wait for it to, uh, um, to redraw the map. Well, actually, you didn't have to wait for it to redraw the map. You could, in fact, press escape once you'd realised you'd done the wrong thing. But the instinctive thing was to let go of the mouse button and then, of course, it started redrawing the map. So put the lock button on and the map will stay exactly where you put it. Um, sorry, that's the resize button. Um, we've got a... Now, if we, if we wanted to edit this uh, route, supposing I wanted to tweak it a bit, um, I'm wanting to say, uh, propose to Gwyneth County Council 
why don't you put a nice uh, cycle route off the road along here, because lots of people like to cycle along here, but it's dangerous because it's a rural road. We want to edit uh, this uh, track, and um, I'm going to suggest, well, why don't you take us along here and then make it parallel to the road up to here. Uh, so I think if I shift click, we can then select a number of points together, and uh, we can then drag them all off the road and uh, put them alongside. So um, we, that's a new feature for editing the tracks. You can pick multiple points and move them all in the same direction, um, which is quite handy. Um, if, you, um, if you trace points which are on the map, they, they can get very, you know, there can be quite a lot of points on there. You might want to simplify that down if you just want to um, uh, if you just want a cruiser um, example, so suppose I select that, um, you can take the route and copy it. Um, yeah, copy, and I'm going to copy it as uh, simplify. Um, and it says remove excess points accuracy level three meters. So I'm going to up that to thirty meters. I'm going to hide the original track afterwards. Copy. And you'll see now that it's created a new a new track, and it's it's going off the road quite a bit because I've reduced the accuracy down quite a lot. <coughs> so you see that. But that can be quite handy in some circumstances if you've got way too many points. Sometimes these um, GPS devices, you know, they'll recall the point every second or two, and you've got thousands of. If you're wanting to do some editing, that can be a real nuisance. So simplifying is a good good um, process there. Right, big, um, big change. We now have a compass. Uh, you can um, turn the map round and have uh, north in any direction you'd like. Uh, once you set it, it will redraw, and all of the text is now um, the right way up for reading, even though the map is not the conventional way up. Um, sometimes if you're doing a walk, well, it's going in a funny direction across the map and you can't all fit it on. You can now rotate it, resize the window, get it all on neatly, and not use up so much paper. Because um, we don't have to have north up in all circumstances. We're just used to that, aren't we? If you so, don't print that, you get a north heading on the printout. Uh, you will. Uh, there is um, there is a little compass thing uh, which um, we export maps uh, as draw. Well, it's for subscribe because that would be slightly quicker to open. Um, and you see down there, there is a compass. Uh, with the uh, red end being north. So, yeah, you get that uh, on the on the corner so you know what you're doing. Um, all right. Now, last time I tried to do some demos of things that needed um, need to be online, and because I wasn't online, it all went horribly wrong. So I did an embarrassing presentation at the uh, London show where half of the uh, talk had to be abandoned. <laughs> um, but... Uh, so I don't know, I think I've actually successfully demonstrated this in a uh, show session before. Uh, the Find Web Photos feature, which has been in for a year and a bit, I think. Uh, this uses a service tool called Geograph on the web, um, and it will go and find uh, photographs from a big database that they have. So this is loading it on the fly from the web. Um, and, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back again. Um, and you see you get uh, thumbnails of them down here. Uh, we can um, see the details, track of, from Tallinn to Broadwater. Um, we can control click and it will open it in the Geograph website. So this website works for uh, British Isles and for Germany. Um, we have hopes to use a similar um, programming interface which is available for Flickr, which of course has worldwide coverage. But for that, we need um, to use HTTPS for their API. The method we're using for um, API calls only supports HTTP at the moment. But there is a RISCOS open limited bounty for um, improving the network stack, which has quite a lot of money against it at the moment. And I think Steve Revel said they think they're about halfway there for making that one to be able to go ahead. So um, uh, if that one gets through, then I hope we'll be able to support a bit more um, exciting things um, in, to integrate RISCOS and with other services in the future. 
Ah, right. I'm just going to demonstrate. You can export um, CSV from uh, this SM. So suppose I wanted to look for, um, let's have a go. We'll search for uh, shops um, now. I think actually I must have name or reference. Oh, hang on. In any OSM tag, right? Yeah, searching shops. So I've looked through all the shops in this town. Um, I can now export them as CSV if I wish. So it can export the grid reference, uh, latitude, longitude, um, the uh, the name of the shop maybe. Um, what type of shop it is, uh, their email addresses, phone numbers and websites. Um, and we'll drop that onto Impact. And we can then create a database. And uh, because it's an open data, uh, because OpenStreetMap data is free, you can <coughs> use this data in various different ways. And here we are, we can load this into a, um, a database if we wish to have information about shops. Actually, there's hardly any websites or emails. Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Right. Um, anything else? Uh, oh, yes. Um, another thing we... Oh, yeah, that one doesn't work. Yeah, we won't do that. Um, it doesn't work even with the internet connection. Um, so, for the future, um, one of the reasons we've done North not being up um, is because uh, we were wanting to help support uh, Chris Hall's uh, SatNav uh, software a bit better. And if you're navigating, it's very helpful if the direction you're traveling is in front on the map. So we will probably be shortly introducing something where if you're following a track, um, a, a live signal from a GPS via Chris Hall's SatNav, that the map will be able to turn uh, so that the direction you're going is in front. Um, there are also some other things we'll have to do to improve uh, maybe predicting which bit of map will be needed next so we can draw it in plenty of time. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was that we are um, having a look at adding contour lines to the British uh, data because um, a few weeks ago the Ordnance Survey released um, five metre contour line information on an open uh, licence. For the um, for the UK, um, did I load the right file there? It's taking some time. Um, the the downside of this is that the contour data for the British Isles is equal in size to the complete map data that we're already providing. So it's going to require quite a bit of processing, and uh, it will use up more of your hard drives. But you're all getting bigger computers with bigger hard drives, so it'll be fine. Um, I'll just let that. Oh, yeah. I should have tried this earlier. Um, I've forgotten it took this long to load. Hmm. We might stop there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show, we'll see it on the stand later on. I'll try and get it loaded up. Um, but that was going to show us some contours for a 10 kilometer area around uh, Durham, and it actually looks quite good already, but we need to get the data processed so it can be loaded faster than that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll just, we'll just stop that there. Um, and then very quickly, um, if I can switch to the other computer, um, we will uh, show you. No one's got any questions. Which version of uh, Impact is on the NutPy? Uh, the NutPy, um, it will be, yeah, it should be, um, well, the, the NutPy software, um, I tend to send off uh, the latest version of Impact to um, Riscos Open uh, shortly after it's released. I don't know how long it takes for them to put um, the new version on the NutPy. So um, our intention is always to have the latest impact on the NutPy. Um, that, of course, will only work on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if you want to use this on other machines, then you need to upgrade to a full license from us. Um, oh.
something's happening now, maybe. At least my screen's gone black. <laughs> No. <laughs> Any other questions? That must have been the one with blank in it. That would have switched between the two microphones. Yes, it would have been normally, I <laughs> thought. Yeah. Okay, yes. I'm not sure why it's not working here. Um, a suggestion that mm. if the contour data is as complex as you said, and large as you said, you might want an option to pick out a say, 10 metre or 25 metre contours only. Yes, uh, well, well, we'll have a look at that. It may be that we can cut down the number of points to make them a bit less accurate or cut down the number of height lines in order to reduce it. Uh, and also, we'll have to think about how we structure the data so that if you're, use, if you're looking at a very small-scale map, um, it's not loading lots and lots and lots of lines that you then can't even see. Um, so there's quite a bit of work to do. Yeah. Uh, but we might have it done by the London show. Who knows? I mean, it's that sort of time scale, I think, because yeah. uh, we do have other things to do as well over the summer sometimes. Get away, you know. <laughs> um, any other questions? Or uh, Well, the video I was going to show you is available on the um, Risk Cross Open Forum, and it's a um, somewhat jerky um, demonstration of uh, Risk OSM being used... Um, on a uh, tablet-based uh, sort of uh, Raspberry Pi device that Rake Fisher uh, in Berlin put together. And there's a picture of it mounted in his car. And you can see Risk OSM redrawing the maps as he drives along. He seems to spend quite a lot of time sat at traffic lights. Um, so it's not the most gripping video. Um, and also, you'll see instantly how the software is not at present optimized for use in that situation because, you know, he goes off the map, it all shifts and spends some time redrawing and in the, in the meantime you're kind of blind as to where you're going or what the junctions are. But um, it's quite interesting that someone has taken our software and Chris's software and some hardware and knocked it all up into something which he's uh, trying that with, which is quite, quite good. It shows how innovative people are in the risk us world. Yeah. Okay.